friends, Paloma here, and welcome to the Bates House. If you have been following my channel and watching my thrift store hauls, then you guys know that I have a huge love for all things vintage, especially vintage hutches. I use multiple hutches in so many different spaces of my house and even multiples on the same wall, and I am okay with it. I did mention sharing a hutch tour showing how I use the different hutches and cabinets in my house, repurposing them, refurbishing them, and doing it on a very small budget to hopefully give you some ideas and creating some organized stations in your home. You guys responded well to the idea, so we're gonna take a look at a few of the hutches in my house. I'm gonna let you guys know how I came up with the idea to repurpose them, why I wanted to use them, how much it cost, and the different supplies and materials that I basically use all the time. The first space that we're going to start off looking at is my hashtag vintage baking station. The total cost for the cabinets in this space was $135. I have a full breakdown with before pictures and a previous tour video, which I'll leave linked below so you can check out the full breakdown there. But as a summary, this space was created from a desire to make scratch foods like pastas and breads, a need for a bigger kitchen, which we could not afford, and pairing that with my love for unfitted kitchens or old style kitchens, and we have my baking station. This is probably the most used space in the entire house, including my actual kitchen. We are gonna start with my main hutch, that was inspired by the very well-known, very expensive and highly sought after Hoosier cabinet. I've always wanted a Hoosier, but I'm very impatient. And I also have this very bad habit of trying to do the most with the least. I found this hutch for $30 on Marketplace and decided to make it into exactly what I wanted, keeping that Hoosier vibe in mind. In it, I wanted to store all of my immediate and most often reached for products and ingredients. Having our signature chicken wire backing gives me not only a cute little look, but it serves a very important function, providing so much vertical storage for all of my tools. Chicken wire is very strong, so it also adds a lot of durability to this piece because I used to tend to move my furniture until I was 100% happy with it. This hutch is on the back side of the house, so I don't get worried about any of the ingredients getting direct sunlight, but it does allow a gorgeous light to come through and light up any of the colored glass or just light up this space in general. It's one of my favorite things about walking into this space, the fact that I can see through the hutch onto my property and still get that gorgeous soft light from having it against the window. And because I know I'm going to be asked, I'll just answer it now. Yes, I do get dust every now and again, but it gets cleaned as you use your tools and supplies and cycle through the different stations that you have. So if you have a huge problem with too much dust collecting, then just do more. My most often reached for small tools are actually hanging above on the chicken wire. In the drawers, I decided to keep all of the extras or overflow. So I have all of my baking tools, my utensils, my pasta making tools and clamps. All of those are in these drawers because whatever I decide to do, every tool that I need is easy to reach, but it's not always out on display. Getting into the lower cabinets. First, I have my mini broom. This is perfect for dusting. Inside, we have our terracotta pots, which we use for serving hot or cold foods. They're great because you can have your food outside and they all have lids. In the next cabinet, I have more of my terracotta pots, large pots, serving bowls. These are perfect also for entertaining because they hold a lot and they can hold hot or cold foods. I have some flat bakeware and some pie crust protectors. In the last cabinet, I have small appliances. These are ones that I really love to keep on hand. I have a small food processor, a waffle iron, and my little dumpling maker when I make mini empanadas. I found this cabinet for $30 on Marketplace and slapped some $10 paint onto it, distressed it because that's still how I like it. And I changed out the hardware for some new pieces. We separated the top and bottom half and put four boards on the top half. 
This gave us a little lip like you see in the Hoosier cabinets where they have a little workspace. But not only was it a great length in the front, it was very nice and long all the way across, providing a really great workspace to hold supplies or pies or whatever it is that I need it to hold at the time. And because I'm a full blown vintage lover maximalist, I just stack all of my really cool pieces on top that match the decor. Next, we can take a look at my baker's pantry. This was actually a handmade gun cabinet. One owner and the man who owned it made it. I found it a marketplace for $50 and it is stunning. It was a large gun case to hold 12 guns but I modified it by adding some shelves to it, painting it, getting it more my style, and it is the perfect shape and size to hold my overflow baking supplies. The fact that the cabinet is nice and deep means that I don't have to worry about the size of storage. I am able to put large containers in here to hold bulk supplies, and that works out perfect for me. I did add hooks to the back to hold measuring cups. I added my burnt wood shelves as I usually do to pretty much everything. And all of my overflow baking supplies like cornstarch, baking powder, bulk sugar, extra flour, all goes into this one unit and it fits so well. I don't have to worry about having multiple places to store overflow supplies. And the large glass panels give it 100% apothecary vibes, which won my heart. In the lower cabinets below, I use this area to store hard goods. It's my silicone molds, my extra bags of like hard candy, bread warming bags, paper bags, miscellaneous things like that that I use but don't always need to grab. Next, we have this skinny display hutch. I found this on Marketplace also for $30 and it was inspired by a grandfather clock cabinet that I made previously. I actually loved that one and I, it was sad to let it go. So when I saw this, I thought it was perfect to kind of mimic that vibe and add it into my space. In this cabinet, I just have a few decorative pieces and some functional pieces, including my pasta machines and some pasta recipe books and my small mixer. It's a vintage mixer. I absolutely love it. And in the bottom cabinet, I just use it for the tortilla press, the tortilla holder and a cheese slicer. Very simple, but it serves a functional decor purpose. Again, I will use whatever cheap white paint I can get my hands on on clearance or the Rust-Oleum furniture paint because it's 10 bucks and a little goes a long way. I will distress them and I will put them in their new home. I do burned wood for everything so it keeps that money or cost to refurbish these items to a minimum. Now we're going to look at another piece that actually came to my brain because I was inspired by vintage furniture. I have wanted a pie safe for the longest time and I was racking my brain on how I could make a pie safe. I had plenty of furniture that I bought or found or been gifted. I needed a pie safe. So this piece was actually intended to be a pie safe. But then it kind of morphed itself into the best worktop. I wanted it to feel like an island. So when I would make my pies, I could put them underneath. They could cool down, whatever. But guys, a pie don't last but five minutes in this house anyway. So having this nice big worktop and storage underneath turned out to be the perfect work island for my pastas, for making bread, for making pies, for doing all of the things because it is a solid wood, heavy piece. So when I'm kneading my bread or working the machines, it doesn't budge. And it has the storage space for everything that I reach for when I'm doing those different things right underneath. It is fantastic. And you can access the storage space from both sides which is very convenient when I have my kiddos in there with me making things, especially Boogie, who loves to be in this space.
Next, we're gonna take a look at my storage hutch. So this cabinet is the perfect depth. It is so deep that my massive bowls and crocks and pots and pans can all fit into this one cabinet, no problem. It actually didn't have a base, so we took some free chair legs that a neighbor gave me with the cool dragon feet and chopped the rest of it off, kept the base, and put them under there and gave her some gorgeous height. I love, again, the large glass panel windows. And they're not only on the front, but they have the large glass panel windows on the side. So you can actually see in this unit from all sides, which is fantastic. Everything that I reach for, whether I'm baking, prepping, canning, all comes out of this cabinet. Now, I know people ask me, what do you do with all that? Well, I literally use it. I do a lot. And if you can't understand that, I'm sorry. It just doesn't make sense to you like it wouldn't make sense to me not to do all the things. So this cabinet stores every bit of work preparation supply that we needed to store. And then it's so nice and big on top and it's so tall I can throw up some vintage decor on top and it looks absolutely adorable, creating a gorgeous flow around this room from one side all the way to the other. Next hutch we're gonna look at is in my vintage coffee station. We love coffee. So the main theme of this space is coffee, but it's a drink station. The lower cabinets also double as storage for overflow product that I like to keep close to the kitchen area. I did find it on Marketplace as well, but it was a post from a local thrift store that I already shop at, so that was pretty awesome. It was $90, and I paired that with $10 clearance paint from Walmart, and bam, I got me a nice refurbished little hutch that's layered with all of the antique coffee themed creamers, sugars, all the good things. I also got the hubby to add a six inch riser to the top half, that way it'll sit higher and we could see out the window more and the coffee machine fits under there nicely and doesn't have to be crammed in that space. And keeping it white just made sure that the flow worked from my baking area to the coffee station. Now we drank our coffee black, otherwise it would be filled with flavored syrups and fancy creamers, but we have learned a lot about the non-food industry and simply choose not to participate full time in consuming those products. But I know visually it would look absolutely adorable in this space. So I just tend to pair vintage coffee vibes with function. For example, a few of the items that actually serve a purpose are my copper canisters, which hold things like my big bag of tortillas because I'm right next to the kitchen. The small canister holds toothpicks. The little blue canister here actually holds cough drops because these are things that we grab for in this area the most. I have my ceramic pot that actually holds coffee filters for cleaning and a bread box that actually holds open bags of chips that I cannot stand to see in the pantry. And since we don't use any syrups or creamers, I just keep my collagen, my vegetable blend and mushroom and honey in these canisters next to the actual coffee machine. And then I pair it with some more coffee decorative items. And my big canister with the rooster is where we keep our ground coffee, which we don't do too much of now because we have an antique coffee grinder that I absolutely love. We are also big tea lovers. We will drink tea hot or cold. So I will take bags, put it into our water bottles for the day that have immunity blends or just nice nutrient dense teas. And we will just drink on that throughout the day. So basically the top drawer is our drink or tea supplies. In the next drawer, we just have drink supplies. So we have tea infusers, tons of straws that are metal, bamboo, or hard plastic that have come from gifts and some lids for some tumblers or cups that the boys have. In the next drawer, we have our little extras. I have little metal canisters. Boogie grabs these for his lunches. Nothing fancy, they just get tossed into this drawer. Next, we have our open medicine drawer, which is the medicine treatments or immunity building type tinctures and stuff like that. Some cough drops, little things. 
And then in the very bottom, we just have replacements. So all of the unopened product that typically stays here in the coffee station because we take any medicines on the way out the house. The cabinet beside it, we have trash bags and some uh, freezer bags. The hubby does request to have them on hand in the case that we do need them. And we have small bags for prepping the boys' snacks in the freezer. We just use the bags and then reuse them over and over again. I have towels for my vegetable containers in the fridge and then some large storage containers and a coffee grinder. Super simple, self-explanatory, but it is one of my favorite places in the house because it holds all of my vintage coffee related things, all of my cool vintage mugs that I love to hold on to and my antique grinder. Makes me absolutely happy to be in this space every morning enjoying my cup of coffee. Next, we're gonna take a look at my vintage decor cabinet. This hutch was actually inspired by my friend, Abby. She came across an antique hutch. She put it in the corner of her house and she changes out the decor for every season, makes it look so cute. And in my mind, I'm like, why didn't I think of that? So I told her I was gonna have to take one of my hutches and do the exact same thing because I never thought to just creatively decorate it for the season instead of it having it serve an actual storage function because this hutch used to be many different things. It was a vintage game space storage. So it displayed a lot of vintage game pieces, a lot of vintage games. And then I just consolidated the games, found more creative ways to store them and put them into the attic room because we're going to ultimately convert that into kind of like an entertainment room. But I did find this piece on Marketplace. It was listed for $100. We made an offer for $75. And when the hubby went to go pick it up, he asked the guy if he had change for $100. The guy said no. And they were actually selling the estate for their family. And they were moving out of town. So he said, matter of fact, take it. We don't want to deal with it. We don't care for it. So we got this hutch for free. It is massive. It has gorgeous curved glass on the side. It has glass shelves. And I just pair all of the cool vintagey antique finds that I can all together to make it look beautiful. I did leave the lights on the back of this hutch from Christmas and I will do an overlay to show how I've changed it for Christmas and then to this current season which is going into spring. kind of get an idea what I'm talking about but I loved the warmth that it brought to this space and I love that I can change it out and play with it because as a creative person I like to kind of change up my spaces to just freshen up the look or just freshen up the vibe you can even change it whenever it comes to special occasions and put some important stuff in there to kind of coordinate with the tablescape whatever it is that I'm going to have going on in this space in the bottom drawers, candle storage is very important to me. I have lots of candles, whether they are real or timer candles. So that's what's in these drawers. I did try to hold on to some femininity. So I paired all of my pretty gold textured frames with really pretty floral touches and some pink candles and soft flowers. 
And I feel like it just kind of adds a soft touch to this entire space. I am surrounded by boys all day long. So for me, having a little feminine touch is a bonus. Plus, they don't really care. They just let me live my best life and don't really say much about anything when it comes to decor. Next is a look inside of our Bates House Body and Works cabinets. Now these aren't necessarily hutches, but they do store a lot of goodies in them and they are repurposed for creating different supplies. I found this piece on Marketplace for $50. It was a German handmade secretary desk. I refurbished and sold the top and refurbished and kept the bottom for myself. Of course, using the same cheap paint and some distressing with a little bit of stain and it flows with the rest of the furniture. I use this to store a lot of my tools whenever I'm making my own soap. And I have a lot of the dispensers in this little desk to kind of keep everything consolidated and out of view. I don't want all of these things on display and they don't fit in the other cabinet. So I decided to use this cabinet for storing the extras, extra containers, extra dispensers, extra masks, extra jars, all that good stuff. It's all consolidated in this one bottom half of a secretary desk. And the rest of the supplies are stored in the two sides of an entertainment center. Entertainment centers are awesome because you can find them on Marketplace all the time for dirt cheap and they have gorgeous glass panels and they are really nice sized. You can stand them side by side, you can separate them, you can put shelves in between them. I've used these as well in my apothecary or in my canning station and we'll get to that later. And this one, it stores all of the ingredients, recipe books for making soap, for making candles, all of the different things that you need when making your deodorant or balms. I even store some extra wax or cheap wax in here, candle wax that I've come across while thrifting, whatever. It's all in this one hutch. And I have the glass panel covered with some Daiso lace. That way you can't see all the junk or stuff inside of the cabinets. And it adds a really cute feminine touch to the overall look. Now these two side cabinets from the entertainment center are separated by a dresser that I actually repurposed into a fabrics dresser. It holds every fabric that I need for entertaining or tablescapes. This is definitely something I suggest you would do with your entertainment purposes. I have another dresser that I use for actual utensils, serving utensils, extra dishes, and things like that for entertaining. But just the feminine touch of the lace just brings this look together 100%. Now, no space is actually complete until I feel like it's completely complete. This one still needs a little bit of tweaking, but for now, this is what I got, and I like it. It flows very well through the house. Next, we're going to make our way into the craft room. I absolutely love hutches for crafting supplies. I have two in this space. Now this is an open room, so the purpose of this hutch was to create a dividing wall from the other spaces in this side of the house. It serves a function for cricket and sublimation. In this hutch, it just stores all of my tools, all of my desktop tools, embossing machines, die cut machines, and things like that. And then cricket supplies, printer refills, I actually go really into detail in my two video room tour for my entire craft room and it explains more about how this space became its function that it is, why it works the way it does. But it was a $75 piece from Marketplace. I didn't have to do anything to it besides replace a glass shelf for a wood shelf and I love the actual wood color that it came with. Perfect. The next hutch is actually on the inner wall of my craft room and it serves as a storage for all of my vintage vibe paper crafting for junk journals or for journaling. It holds so much and it just brings this space together. All I did was gut the windows, took off the back, 
put the chicken wire, painted it with the cheap paint, did a lot of distressing, put a base wood top on the bottom half, kind of extending that lip so I could push the hutch back further and have a bigger lip. Overall, this brings this space together so well because it allows me to store a bunch of actual supplies in a very vintage way. Since this space is in an open room, I needed to remove all of the Ikea white furniture and change it out for something with an older vibe. And I feel like this just ties it all together because it is such a big piece. It makes it a nice big statement in this area. Now, we're gonna take a look at the adult beverages cabinets. So one of the best things about having hutches in your space for storage is you can definitely make the most out of the hashtag unfitted kitchen vibe. You can move things until they suit your needs or 100% fit how you want them to be. And you can move them around until you are totally satisfied. Now, we don't have a bar area. Our kitchen is very small, so we can't just like entertain on a bar top or a bar island or something like that. So we needed a place to store all of our adult beverages and our adult beverage themed goodies. Of course, because, you know, in vintage home decor and things like that, there's so many accessory pieces that are just too fantastic to pass up. So I had this hutch top. I gutted all the glass. I just put chicken wire, added wood shelves, and made myself my own little liquor cabinet. Now, of course, when you're making drinks, you need all of the fun things that you add into the drinks. So I found this corner hutch at Goodwill for $25, and I dragged it home with me, and I have been in absolute love with it ever since. It was kind of an orangey brown color. All we did was remove the glass, and we literally burned it with the hardware on. We did nothing, just burned it, and it looks gorgeous. I did paint the inside just so that you could see the stuff that was inside the cabinet. But it's super simple and self-explanatory. I mean, it just stores all the things that we throw into the actual mixed drinks, including sodas, fruit drinks, tajin, lemon juice, simple syrup. All that stuff can be found in this corner hutch serves a purpose it's so decorative i love the natural color that it took on when you burned it it's just a fantastic piece super affordable and it fits perfectly in the little corner i love it and i'm so glad that i saw it and snagged it and of course i had to decorate it with some vintage bar themed touches to just tie the entire look together Next, we can look in my dish display hutch where I actually just store dishes <laughs> to display. I also use this hutch for larger serving dishes and grab for stuff that we use on a regular basis for entertaining or for everyday purposes. I think you can consider this hutch a repurchase. I bought one, I refurbished it, and I sold it. And the hubby kind of hated that he wanted it back so we had to find another one and we found this hutch for 90 dollars. i use it to store a lot of my favorite pieces that we use for entertaining or i just don't want to let go of i have that adorable yellow basket weave coffee tea set i have a teapot that my godmother gave me some milk glass goblets that my mother-in-law gave me it's just crammed full of pieces that I actually enjoy seeing and want to have on display, including my growing Spice of Life set. I haven't built up a useful set yet, so I'm not using them on an everyday basis until I can get enough bowls, plates, cups, things like that to use every day. I've considered using the small baking dishes as like personal size bowls, we shall see. But right now, this is where my collection's at. I absolutely love Spice of Life. I don't know what it is about it, but I love it and I adore it. I want to have it. I want to see it. I also toss in some coordinating colors like these gorgeous green dishes. I love the green dishes just as much as I love amber glass dishes. 
They're perfect for entertaining through the seasons. And I like to pull all this stuff out whenever we have parties because I don't use disposable dishes. And just like I don't use disposable dishes, we don't buy paper towels. So I have the top drawer full of fabric napkins that we use for everyday dinners and messy cleanup things. In the next drawer, I have napkin rings that I use for entertaining. I don't really put place settings with napkin rings unless it's about eight to 10 people. And then I have some crystal serving dishes. There are plenty of these because crystal serving dishes are so fancy and I want people to feel like they have someone doing something special for them. Plus, for some reason, the market on crystal serving dishes is rock bottom and you can literally get some of the best sets for like freaking five dollars. Like that's crazy to me. But they look gorgeous and they're large and grand and whoever you are entertaining is definitely going to feel special. And sticking to the entertaining theme, we are going to look at my boozy cabinet, which is a name that was coined by my sister-in-law because she said that it is a cabinet full of bougie glasses, but for booze. So it is a boozy cabinet and I love her for that forever. <laughs> so in this cabinet, well, for starters, this actually was another gun cabinet. I gutted it. I got this piece for free whenever I was getting some other furniture and the average cost for all of the pieces that day made this cabinet like 10 bucks, but it was actually a free gun cabinet, which was amazing. So I gutted it and I added some shelves. Of course, I painted it white, distressed it, did all the things, added a handle to it and filled it with my bougie alcohol themed glasses. I love all the different styles and types and colors, so I couldn't get rid of them. And whenever I find some that tickle my fancy, I just load them up into this cabinet. And then down below, I have some amber serving dishes because, again, I love amber glass and I love entertaining and serving my friends on fancy dishes. Okay, friends, so I was actually going to introduce this next space as my absolute most favorite space in the house, but who am I kidding? I love all the spaces in my house, but welcome to the Bates Family General. In this area, I have repurposed multiple things to create a, an old worldly general store vibe for our overflow food pantry and our canning pantry and our canning supplies and growing apothecary and jar storage and all of the things. I have put a video on here for you guys to take a look at. And it's the kind of content that I share on Instagram. So I always suggest that you come follow me over there because I share all of the things all of the time. And I don't get paid for it. It's just for the sake of sharing because I want people to be inspired for little money and see that there, if there's a will, there's a freaking way, man. So again, nothing in this space cost me a lot of money. I used white paint. I used a torch and some propane, burned the wood, added shelves to things, just made things look somewhat coordinated on a small budget. And I absolutely love the way it feels to be in these spaces. And one of the most rewarding parts about enjoying these spaces is the fact that there is no guilt over how much was spent to create them. That makes it, I feel like, a million times better because the challenge of creating something amazing from the least and seeing the result and being in the space and have it work so well and feel so good to me makes it so much more worth it. So in that video clip, it showed the prices that I paid for all of these little stations. 
in this station, I keep all of my home canning supplies, whether it relates to the pressure canner or the water bath canner or just preparing whatever it is that I'm going to be canning. All of it is stored on this hutch. I like to store all of the not so often reach for product on the top. So up top, I have an electric canner that I have yet to use, but I found for an amazing deal with all kinds of jars and a water bath canner. It was a great Facebook marketplace deal. And I keep a cream separator. So whenever we're going to be milking our goats, eventually, whenever we get brave enough to do that, a tamal pot for large batches of things. I have my ingredients, my salts, canning salt, petroleum jelly for the pressure canners, some pickling seasonings, cupcake liners for vacuum sealing. There's just a bunch of different quick grab supplies that I absolutely need regularly when canning. I like to add little touches of vintage magazine images because they're so cute. And I have used lid containers. I have some tape and I throw in some vintage accessories and parts and pieces to kind of just add to the decor. I have jars with wide mouth lids, my Tadler lids, my Harvest Guard lids, reusable seals, gloves, and so on. On the actual shelf top or the bar top, work top, whatever you call it, I have quick grab rings and a pepper made it into the jar. <laughs> I have markers because you have to label everything. You got to know when you put the stuff in the pantry. I have different kinds of lids, measuring cups, instructions, and nutrition labels, alcohol, all the stuff that I need for processing any food or jars that comes into this room is all in this space. I like to keep plenty of strips on hand, tags on hand to label different things. I keep baggies. I don't really use these, but they're there if I need them. I like to keep uh, tape and twine. Tape for whatever I need it for, but the twine is for drying my herbs and then my vacuum seal uh, lids, I guess you could say, for vacuum sealing your wide mouth and standard mouth jars. And that's it. I mean, that's all of the immediate reach stuff that I keep stored on the top. And then we can take a look in the drawers where I have even more goodies. In the top drawer, I keep all of my lids. Now I have already placed an order for more lids along with more of the Tadler lids. I have my funnels my canning jar grippers, my scale, all kinds of stuff is in that top drawer. I have some really cute jar bags. I got these years ago from Dollar Tree, I believe. They are absolutely adorable and I have yet to use them, but I have them just in case I need them. Anytime I go antiquing and find cool old lids or rubber seals, I will pick those up as well. And little extras that I kind of need off and on are in this drawer. Next to that, I have my vacuum sealer bags and pouches along with coffee filters. Coffee filters for cleaning glass and for vacuum sealing in the large jars when you're doing dry goods. When you have fine powders, you don't want it to go through your hose. So that's what that's for. I have some fermenting lids and then some regular canning lids that I will only use for dry sealing because I feel like they're cheaper, but my friend found them uh, somewhere and she just gave them to me. In the bottom cabinet, I just have some metal storage tins, some clear plastic containers, and just some bulk dry food goods. So if you follow me on Instagram at the time of this video, I've already canned these chickpeas and 16 pounds of pinto beans. That's what I've been doing for the past two days, actually. So I have some canning salt and some fruit freezer pecked in and some wax and stuff like that. Just small, basic, extra little things that I don't need every day. So that's why they're kind of low. I grab them whenever I need them. Don't need them often, but they're there. Of course, with food security and canning and food preservation comes the awareness when it comes to medicine. 
I am definitely on a mission to learn more about herbalism, homeopathic remedies, all those good nature loving things, understanding how herbs work in the body, so on and so forth. So of course, I have to have a place to put all of those things and uh, why not make your own little apothecary? So one of my hutches is actually the Bates Family Pharmacy with an F and it's just a growing apothecary. Now I've done exactly what I've done throughout this entire video <laughs> to this hutch, which was take some cheap white paint, paint it, burn it, and make it look oh so cute and coordinated and flow with the rest of the furniture in my space on a small budget. The best part is it stores quite a bit and it's the same height as the other one so I could actually create that flow up top with the supplies that I don't reach for as often and put the big stuff up there like a dehydrator, a slicer, meat grinder, stuff like that. All the parts and pieces that go with all of that. And then down below, we can store all of the cute stuff like all of the different herbs and tinctures. One of the best parts when I look at this space is knowing that a lot of this came from our own garden and it came from community members. So people in the neighborhood who grow quite a bit of herbs and garden stuff and they're just like, hey neighbors, who wants this? Who wants that? And they are willing to share and the sense of community is so great. So I've been able to fill this cabinet with plenty of dried herbs. Plus I will find some herbs on clearance in places like Sprouts on their organic herb wall where they have their different herbs and they'll mark them down and you can get them for like dirt cheap. Eventually, I do want to have a better understanding of all the different herbs, make my own oils, make my own medicines, and that requires a space to dedicate to that because eventually it shall be. So why not prepare for it now and then just change as I learn more and modify as I go. Of course, coming across a bunch of glass jars can be pricey too, right? But I'm going to show you what I do to help reduce that cost over time. So I keep all of my medicine bottles, droppers, amber glass jars, and all of that. I just wash them and keep them in here. I have a digital scale and some wax lined paper, some labels for labeling the different jars of whatever it is I'm making. I have fermentation supplies, some tea bags, amber glass, cork bottles, because, you know, we might have medicine one day. I have cheesecloth because it's so functional. I actually use mine over and over and over again. So those haven't been used yet. I have some wood tools for my food mill or pressing different herbs, oils, whatever. And I keep my extra virgin olive oil bottles. So when I make oil extracts, I can put them in there. And then I keep every other freaking glass jar I can get my hands on. If I have a nice looking, good quality glass jar, I'm going to keep it. That way I can reduce the cost to make the different tinctures or oils or whatever it is that I need to make. I don't have to go out and buy all the jars because I can just repurpose all of these. The next hutch style cabinet is this very narrow, tall cabinet. It used to be glassed in. I took off all the glass panels because I knew I wanted it to be a library type storage shelving kind of situation in this space because it's very narrow and it has a very nice solid wood back that I could turn it and like hang things on it. But it was 30 bucks, so it's no longer a hutch. Now it's a bookshelf for all of my book learning things. Now, the rest of this space isn't necessarily hutches, but they are repurposed furniture, and I kind of just wanted to run it by you and share it anyway. Now, I can do a full room tour of this space, but that's not going to fit in this video. So I'm just going to kind of give you a rundown of what is happening. All of these cabinets are entertainment center pieces. <laughs> So the first one I found for $90 was a three piece, fantastic, gorgeous combination. We added shelves. We pretty much just 
made it what we needed it to be but the structure was so sound it was 100 solid wood had the general store vibes with the front glass panels with the touch of that soldering in them gorgeous 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 concept for dirt cheap right especially for all wood material so we just went ahead and rinsed and repeated we got two more entertainment centers piece them together, took the centers out, kept the side cabinets, and they all paired so well to make our Bates Family General canning pantry. And I am in absolute love with it. Well, friends, that is it for this hutch tour of all of my hutches in my house. I'm going to leave you with a video of me doing things. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Comment down below. Let me know what your favorite hutch was. Let me know if you got inspired to create any ideas in your house that you could utilize in your everyday systems. Or did I inspire you to never buy anything again so you don't turn into a full-on vintage lover maximalist like me? Let me know. Also, share this video with anybody that you think needs some creative inspiration. Subscribe if you are new to the channel and hit the notification bell on your way out to be notified of new videos whenever I post. And that is it for this one, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!